Theo Girard on the line with us, the president of the United Steelworkers Union, USW.org. Of course, their website. President Girard, welcome back. Thank you, Tom. Good to be with you. Great to have you again. Uh, the Obama campaign came out yesterday with a two-minute and a six-minute version of an ad that was echoed today by the uh, Paul Begala Super PAC in a 30-second ad about GST Steel. And then Romney responded to that with an ad about a steel company that Bain Capital had made a small investment in, along with eight other companies, saying that uh, he made jobs. What's going on here? Well, I think that... Uh Mitt Romney's trying to defend himself against his years of years of as uh, uh, the governor of Texas, who I thought I'd never quote, Rick Perry called it, vulture capitalism. And uh, what you have is that we've got the Bain Capital uh, economic model of going around and acquiring companies for their debt and, and a little bit of cash. And then as soon as they get that, loading the company up with additional debt sucking as much money out of the company by paying themselves astronomical um, fees, dividends, bonuses, every which way you can. And then when the down cycle comes, letting the company fend for itself and go to business. In the case of GST, uh, they cost uh, 750 members of our union and, and their families. They cost them their jobs. They cost their families son or daughter from not being able to go to college. They destroyed people's retirement income, and they do that. When he goes to the small steel company that he's talking about, they put a pittance of money in with a whole bunch of other people. And that company succeeded because it had nothing to do with Bain Capital's management. Bain Capital just put some money into a company. And uh, to be honest, that, that's a well-managed steel company, but it's not being managed by Bain Capital. Right. And and the, the principle, you know, there's a difference between venture capital, which is where you basically you know, buy some stock in a fledgling company, uh, thus giving that company money that they can build the business with, between doing that and doing something that prior to the Reagan administration was illegal, which is going to a bank and saying, I want to buy this company for $100 million. Please loan the company the money so that the company has to pay back the bank, but give the ownership of that company to me. And and this this is something that, uh, when when and how did this happen? Do you know? Well, this happened in the mid-90s, and uh, it happened over an extended period of time. Mm -hmm. it, it was the same business model that they used in many other parts of the country. You've seen some of the stuff with a company called Ampad that mm -hmm. they did the same thing, too, and we could go through a whole bunch of others they did in different parts of the country. The thing with, with GST Steel is it was actually a, a viable steel company that had been operating for a long, long time. And it went through, as the steel industry does, anybody that knows the industry, the steel industry, unfortunately, is cyclical. You have up years and down years. Sure. Well, these guys loaded this company with so much debt that in the down years, they just said, liquidate it, get rid of it. Right. And, and, you know, part of what troubles me so much, Tom, is that we know that these guys took tens of millions, if not hundreds of millions of dollars out of, of this company, out of their workers' pockets, put it in their pocket, and then you go and you find out that Mitt Romney's made uh, investments or, or put his investment money in Swiss bank accounts and in the Cayman Islands and so he can pay 14% uh, and set up a $100 million trust fund for his kids. What about the kids of those people at GST Steel who didn't get to go to college because Mitt Romney and Bain Capital systematically, knowingly, deliberately destroyed their chance of having a good, decent family-supporting job? Yeah, and that's not that's the only company the that they've done it to. I mean, I, I watched them do it to Clear Channel. Yeah. Um, it's and, and you know that's 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 the the that's what the president and is trying to to sort of confront when he's saying that manufacturing is the future. That we have to give companies um, take away tax break for companies going offshore. I mean, doing these kind of things. Right. And and I, I just can't accept that the American people are going to elect a guy who destroys jobs and then takes his money and invests it in offshore bank accounts. One of the questions that I was asking at the very beginning of this show two hours ago was that given given the popularity of Mitt Romney right now in the opinion polls, I mean, the New York Times actually has him two points ahead of the president. And given this this reality of, of how he made his, his hundreds of millions of dollars and continues to, I mean, you know, continues to pull 10, 20, 30 million dollars a year. How can, how can this message break through? Is it, is it that, 
Americans aren't listening? Is it that they don't pay attention until October? Is it that, uh, or is it that, you know, that, uh, I forget who said it. It was, it was one of fairly high-profile media cynic who said, the, you know, European working class people know that they're working class. American working class people believe that they're temporarily inconvenienced millionaires. And so they tend to side with the party that is in favor of the millionaires. Well, look, at I think in, in America, everybody's conditioned that uh, if you work hard and play by the rules, you can be this, this huge economic success. And if you go back almost to Jimmy Carter, certainly to Ronald Reagan, if you go through that period of time, we've had this huge onslaught of people being told, that the future of America was in financial services and other services, and manufacturing was blasé. It's it's the old school, uh, only to find out that uh, you can't create real wealth unless you make things, and and you make things through manufacturing things, and and the kind of, of opportunities that we we let happen for the bank capitals of the world, where they could become, as Rick Perry said, vulture capitalists. Uh, even when 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 a Rick Perry says that this is vulture capitalism and this should not be the kind of capitalism that America stands for, then I think one of our problems, Tom, is we have to get that message out to what what many people call the low information voters. Yeah. And that doesn't mean they're bad people. I mean, that means these are people that get up in the morning real early, find their way to work, maybe work 8, 10, 12 hours, not making a lot of money, come home to Two, two husband and wife both working, got to take care of the kids, family. They don't have time for this stuff every day in and day out the way I do or the way you do. Yeah. And our objective has to be to get the message out to those people. Um, you know, take Obamacare. I'm, I'm proud that the Republicans call it Obamacare. Is it the health care bill I wanted? Absolutely not. But it's the health care bill that the president and the Democrats fought for over the objection of, of a uh, right-wing filibuster in the, in the Senate. And guess what? The donut, holes is, the donut hole is closed for seniors. Kids that are born with a pre-existing condition, their parents will be able to get them health care. Health insurance companies that didn't spend enough on health care but spent too much on dividends and corporate CEOs have to pay back almost a billion and a half dollars. Uh, students that are going off to school, the parents don't have to worry that the kid could trip and break his leg and not be able to get health insurance and maybe have to quit school. We've done all those things. On top of that, the president is fighting to have student loans be at 3% plus interest versus 6% plus interest, and the Republicans are saying, no, we want the kids to pay 6%. Uh, the president is trying to say we need to have the rich pay their fair share. You know, Mitt Romney puts his money in, that he made out of the GSTs and the AMPEZ in Swiss and, and, and uh, Came offshore around, so. bank accounts mm -hmm. and, and doesn't want to pay his fair share while my secretary and I pay 30% or the people that lost their jobs at GST Steel, they pay their 30%. What the hell is wrong with this? Yeah. I mean, the president's fighting for a fair economy for all so that we all get to share in the prosperity that America's creating. Yeah, and, and this is the problem, is that I, I don't think that most Americans get that dynamic that you just so brilliantly described. And um, I, just, I just saw, excuse me for interrupting, but I just saw something yesterday, and I was... We just have about 30 seconds, sir. Okay, I saw something yesterday that said the Fortune 500 companies had the highest collective profit level in, in the last 10 years, $865 billion. The stock market is higher than it was prior to the economic collapse. All that happened because the president's fighting for jobs, not because we've allowed the Republican agenda to take hold again. Yeah, yeah, we don't need austerity here. Leo Girard, the president of the United Steelworkers Union, USW.org. Uh, president Girard, thank you so much for being with us again. Sorry, sorry for being so long-winded. No, no, you did perfect. You did perfect. Uh, the, the, the breaks I have no control over. They, they start when they start. Thank you so much for being with us. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you.